So, you've got your tiny pile attached, working out with power. So you want to put it in a case to keep it protected. So, if you've bought the full kit, you will get a case and the screws to screw it together. If not, the files are available on the, on the website. I shall uh, post a link in the video just to make sure you know where they are. The screws I use are M2.5 by 10mm cap screws. They'll stay in the steel ones as well, just to make them look shiny and nice. You should be able to use pretty much any screw as long as it fits. The head of the screw needs to fit in these holes. So, you know, you probably need to just stick to the M2.5 cap screws I use. You might need to clean up the holes a little bit. But again, if you bought it from me, I'll have done that for you. Make sure everything fits. So, this is where things get a little bit fiddly. First things we need to do is just make sure we chop off any excess cable here. Because that will get in our way. So, flush cutters. Snip that off as flat as you can. Whilst making sure you don't touch everything all together. Because that won't be good. We don't want to let the magic smoke out. Right, so this charging board is past the battery through here. Get it out of the way. This charging board actually sits inside this slot in the case. And we've got the gap at the top there for the charger. So if we move things away slightly. Now that just slides from there onto those catches. Maybe a little bit snug, so you might just need to get a tool. Best place to push is actually on the back of the uh, USB. And that should just push neatly into place. Sit inside the little groove. You probably can't see that on the camera. But there is a little recess that that sits in. And the charging sockets all nicely, neatly there. Now, the battery, basically, I just stick them down with some double sided tape. Just down there. Got a big roll of the stuff. So if I just quickly. Well, not so quickly, as the case may be. Get some double sided tape. Oh, the battery. And that just stops it rattling around. It can't go anywhere anyway, there's no ring for it, but <laughs> let's keep it safe. So that's the easy bit done. Now the tricky bit is this one. So that's got the buttons sit in these holes eventually until it gets fiddly. So these are your buttons and then the space for the stick as well. Now the screen needs to slot into these little slots and that was the quote I mentioned in the power video if you watch that. That basically keeps this cable nice and neat. So what we need to do Get the cable in place ready. Be very careful not to damage your screen ribbon. It's actually easier if you do it upside down so these buttons don't fall out because they have a tendency of falling out and going all over the place. And this is very fiddly, but take your time with it because you can quite easily damage the screen. So the screen has to slot inside there and the same on the other side. I found a magic way to do this yet. Yeah, it's just a case of take it gently and slow. Normally best to just tease it under like that. And 
keys and cables. some of the plastic slightly or it might just tease over like that so check your cables okay and have a sneaky peek down there just to make sure the cables are okay and everything should start to sit nicely at this point you can take the screen protector off but I'd like to save those so I can put them back on later The bottom half in place. So a little bit fiddly, but just take it steady. And it'll be okay. And just check. You can feel the buttons working, and they're okay. The top bit works in a similar way, but it's a lot easier because there's not much to do it. So if you slot that over the screen, maybe a little bit snugger. That just clips on there, and that should all sit flat and flush. And then the next tricky bit is to just fold all these cables down. Make sure they don't get trapped anywhere. And there's a tiny gap. You'll see you've got safe cutouts there for the USB, the HDMI, and for the cable as well. So that should all gently squeeze together. Too generous with the with the screwdriver because it's only in plastic, so you don't want to go stripping any thread. So yeah, screw that in. Some of these joysticks are a little bit on the loose side. That's because this tiny square is so difficult to get the right size. It's better off being a tiny bit bigger than a tiny bit smaller. So what you can do is the black elastic band that comes with your kit. It's normally just wrapped around you just holding everything together. If you cut yourself a piece of that, you can place it over the end of that joystick and then push the joystick on over the elastic band and that makes it a nice good fit and it all works properly you can also put a bit of glue on there but you need to be super careful you don't end up gluing up the joystick so you could put a spot of glue in there and then glue them on it's up to you now if you order the full kit that will be sublined separately just to make it a bit slimmer for postage purposes and then you can pop yourself a memory card in and check everything still works 
while we're here we can check the charger that still goes to nice orange light and that would eventually go green once it's charged so we that stick on switch on and we're ready to play